All right, everyone, this is the Oregon page in the 50 states book. So let's start at the top where it says, welcome to the Beaver State. Oregon is original. Way back in 1971, the 33rd state passed the first ever bicycle bill, which said that all new roads must include areas for bikers and walkers. Usually a governor signs a new bill at an official looking desk, but the bicycle bill was signed outdoors on the seat of a bike. It's no wonder that a bike loving state overflows with natural beauty and outdoor adventuring. Indeed, the windswept Pacific coast was a fitting destination for the intrepid explorers of the Lewis and Clark expedition. But Oregon is not only about the great outdoors. Cities such as Portland are bursting with cultural offerings to satisfy music and art lovers. Buzzing, vibrant Portland is overflowing with friendly, energetic, creative types, giving the metropolis a welcoming small town feel. And being someone who's gone to Portland a lot, I can agree with that. It's a really great city. Now let's look down at the key facts here. The capital is Salem. Largest cities are Portland, Eugene, and Gresham. Bird Western Meadowlark. It's named for some think the name comes from the French word for Hurricane Oregon. Statehood date February 14, 1859. Statehood order 33. And the flower is the Oregon grape. Postal code OR or region is Pacific, main time zone Pacific, and the tree is Douglas fir, and their state motto is she flies with her own wings. All right, moments to remember. February 15, 1812, after a two-year voyage of discovery from St. Louis, Along what is now called the Oregon Trail, the Astra Expedition arrives. Expedition members include Native American guide and interpreter Marie Dorian. May 22, 1843, ten, or sorry, 1,000 pioneers head west in their wagons on the Oregon Trail. Travelers seeking their fortunes wore the trail into a highway 100 foot wide and 10 foot deep in places. May 5, 1866, Joel Monson leads a daring rescue in his lifeboat, saving an entire shipwrecked crew. October 5, 1877, the Nez Perce chief Joseph surrenders native land to save tribal lives. June 1, 1905, celebrating the centennial of the Lewis and Clark Expedition, the world's largest log cabin, nearly half an acre, opens to the public in Portland. July 9, 1938, the Bonville Lock and Dam opens, creating renewable hydroelectricity, but flooding several towns. 1958, the Oregon Medical Society named civil rights activist De Norval Unthank Doctor of the Year. August 1964, NASA astronauts begin training for the Apollo moon mission by hiking through a jagged lava flow near the Mackenzie Pass. June 29, 1972, waffle sold pairs of the first Nike trainers are distributed to athletes in the U.S. Olympic trials in Eugene. As far as the famous people, we have Hin Matutya Latket, thunder rolling down the mountain chief Joseph. He was born in 1840 and died in 1904. Joseph's 1877 speech at the surrender of his Nez Perce tribe was a famous expression of hope for equality. And then we have Tabitha Moffat Brown, born in 1780, died in 1858, the mother of Oregon, trekked the Oregon Trail at age 66, then established a home and school for orphan children. And then we have Linus Carl Pauline, born in 1901 and died in 1994. This Portland native won two Nobel Prizes, the first for chemistry and the second for peace. And then over here, we have Beverly Cleary. You may have heard of her. She was born in 1916. 
the Ramona author grew up in Yamhill, a town so small it didn't have a library. So her mom started one. With Matt Groening, born in 1954, the creator of The Simpsons, was born in Portland. And then we have Marie Iodorian, born in 1786, died in 1850. Dorian was from the Iowa tribe, was a guide on the Astor expedition to find an overland route to the Pacific coast. So I think that's all the famous people. So if we zoom in here up at Portland, that's their big city. Here are some of the highlights, which I'm sure I could tell you a lot more, but this is what they say. Flip a coin, two pioneers founded Portland, one from Boston, Massachusetts, and one from Portland, Maine. They flipped a coin to decide the name of the city. Huh. That's why there's two Portlands. Voodoo Donuts. Oh, I've been there. Here you can savor a bacon maple donut bar and even get married there. That is true. I have a friend that is a manager there, so... Um, Anytime I go visit, I always get those donuts. It's pretty great. Powell's. Oh, I love Powell's. It's the largest bookstore in the world. Used and new books. It's really, really awesome. And then Taon Creek. Search for slugs in these forested canyons. There's, of course, a lot more. But anyway, let's keep going up here. So we have... Peter Iredale, Marvel at, but don't try sailing this 1906 wreck. Cannon Beach is famous for Haystack Rock. I've been there. Um, it's close, close to, I would say my niece and nephew, they live kind of in this area. They're between Portland and the coast over here where the Cannon Beach is. All right, Burnside Skate Park. In Portland was built by the public for the public. We have Garibaldi. Place your bets. The residents of Garibaldi have been racing crabs since 1985. Then we have Oregon State Capitol. Top the Salem Capitol building is a gold-plated statue of an axe-wielding pioneer. And then we have Lincoln City's Kite Festival. See some of the biggest kites in the world. Cows on campus. Oregon State University in Corvallis is known as Moo U because of its agricultural program. So that's where Salem is. So Salem, Gresham, and Portland, those are all kind of the bigger things. Um, and then, oh, and Eugene, excuse me. And that's where the university is. University of Oregon, Olympic runner Steve. Prefontaine was born in Coos Bay and starred in track at the UO in Eugene. Then we have Yakina Head at 93 feet tall. This is the tallest of Oregon's 11 lighthouses. We have Sea Lion Cave just north of Florence. This is one of the largest sea caves in the world and a perfect place for sea lion spotting. And then we have the Oregon Caves National Monument. It has 15,000 feet of marble passages. That rocks. And then Oregon Shakespeare Festival. Nearly 700 volunteers work each year to bring the Bard's plays to life. We have Crater Lake National Park. Find the deepest lake in the country here. Daffodils. The town of Brookings is the nation's top producer of daffodils and Easter lilies. Lava landscapes. Visit volcanic landscapes and lava caves at the Newberry National Volcanic Monument. There's Warm Springs, Indian Reservation, Mount Hood. This volcano last erupted in 1805. This is the Willamette River. Over here we have Multnomah Falls. Oh, it's one of my favorite places to go. I've grown up going there. Every year we would go to Idaho because we, it's pretty much up here along the border of Oregon. And so we drive along here and then we um, make our way up to um, Washington first and then go over to Idaho. But we'd always stop at Multnomah Falls for breakfast or at least just to stop and look at the waterfall. Oregon has more than 200 waterfalls, but at 620 feet, none are taller than this one. And yeah, I've gone hiking and seen a lot of beautiful waterfalls, but Multnomah Falls is my favorite. And then Columbia River Gorge is gorgeous. Also a place where we drive alongside 
righteous windsurfing is to be had here. And you will see a lot of windsurfers. Yeehaw! Bronco rider George Fletcher wowed rodeo fans at the Pendleton Roundup. Joseph, this city is named for the Nez Perce chief who famously said it does not require many words to speak the truth. I like that. Hazelnut, Oregon is the U.S.'s top producer of hazelnuts. You can get lots of hazelnuts that way. Flag, Oregon has the only state flag with a different image on either side. That's pretty cool. You can just draw the front part though, which is this one. And over here, John Day Fossil Beds Museum. If you've never seen a three-toed horse's skeleton but always wanted to, be sure to visit. Painted hills. These hills, formed in ancient times, are named after their colorful layers of rock. Coffee. A recent study found over a thousand coffee shops brewing in Oregon. I'm not surprised because they have lots of good coffee. Um, preserved sandals. Sandals found in a cave at Fort Rock Park are over 10,000 years old. That's so cool. And last thing here is Shaniko. Oregon has more ghost towns than any other state. And this is one of the best. All right. So I think that is it for our 50 states book. Just a few last things. So the state motto again is she flies with her own wings. In um, Latin, it's alis volat propris. State fish is the Chinook salmon. You get the best salmon in um, Oregon. And then the state insect is a swallowtail butterfly. Area is 95,997 square miles. Highest point is 11,239 feet. Lowest point is sea level. You know, another thing they didn't mention, if you go to the coast, that's where the Tillamook factory is, and that's where they make this ice cream and cheese and butter you name it they've got all the all that good stuff that's another great place to go visit when you go to Oregon anyway I hope you learn a little more and hope that you'll want to go if you haven't already and so explore some of these things all right see you later